Hey guys, Tommy with Elevation Every Weekend. Thanks for stopping back by and checking out the video. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick overview, kind of a comparison and contrast of these two bikes. On my right is the Surly Ice Cream Truck and on my left is the Surly Pugsley. So I've owned both these bikes for a good while now. This one over three and a half years. I bought this one used off of a friend. This one about brand new uh, November of last year. Um, but I have had an opportunity to ride both, uh, both in the snow obviously and in dirt roads and gravel grinding and have many hundreds of miles on both bikes. Uh, so I can definitely give you kind of a good overview on uh, what both bikes ex excel at and why you might want to choose one platform over the other, um, even though they are both fat bikes and do kind of cross over in several ways as well. So first, just cover some of the basics uh, that they share in common. Obviously, they're both from the same company, Surly. The Pugsley was the first mass-produced uh, fat bike and is kind of credited with being kind of the, uh, the, the main company that kind of started it all. Um, and then this bike came later on the, the ice cream truck as they expanded their line. Um, but the similarities are this, uh, both are steel frame fat bikes, uh, surely only makes steel frame bikes. Um, so that's one of the main similarities. Um, obviously they're both fat bikes, um, but we'll get into some of the differences on what makes them different. Uh, but they both excel in riding in snow and sand and things like that. Both have uh, eyelets and brazons are you know excellent at uh, bike packing because uh, you can load them up with gear that can carry a load uh, so those are the kind of the basic areas that they share similarities in uh, but there are a number of differences and we'll start to go over those right now so one of the first major differences i do need to point out uh, is this bike is a 2020 it's the current model the latest model of the surly ice cream truck this is a 2014 pugsley so it, you know it's several years old at this point uh, around 2014, 2015, so this was 2014, so I guess it was about 2015, uh, the Pugsley actually went away for a year or two, and then it did come back in uh, 2017 or 18, I believe, uh, and they did kind of redesign it, and it actually has a design more similar to this now, uh, but the older, uh, and, the, and the, the older ice cream truck as well had a design more similar to, the, to this right here. So the easiest way to spot it is uh, if you see the jump bar, um, on the frame uh, that'll tell you it's an older one and if you don't see it uh, like on this frame that'll give you a clue whether it's a Pugsley or an ice cream truck that it's a, a more current uh, model um, but that's one of the major uh, differences is that you know they are kind of two different uh, eras of Surly bikes uh, yeah, I'm not sure there's a tremendous difference uh, as far as their capability goes uh, but there were some reasons why they made some of those changes so again, one of the kind of the differences uh, uh, is the ice cream truck is listed under Surly's trail category. Uh, what makes it more of a trail oriented bike is it is a little slacker and I'll show you some close ups here shortly. Uh, we'll go over the frames in detail so you can see a little more contrast on the frame angles and, and the tubes and whatnot. Um, but this is a little bit slacker. You can see the, the bend in the seat post, um, a little bit slacker on the head angle and in the fork. Um, so it's a little more designed for trail type riding. Uh, it does have, accommodates a dropper seat post if you wanted to, to, to add one of those. Whereas the Pugsley is uh, in the touring adventure bike category. Um, again, it's, it's a little more upright and comfortable in its position. Uh, the newer ones, they've actually extended the wheelbase, uh, which helps with stability and uh, you know, gives you more clearance for pedaling and whatnot, especially if you have you know, you know, bags and whatnot loaded up on the bike. Um, but it's, it's just a little bit different in, in the positioning on the bike and what it's designed for. It's a little more upright and designed for comfort and uh, touring. So that, that's kind of the, the main dif difference in the geometry of the frames. Uh, again, it's fairly subtle. It's not drastically different. Uh, but if you're doing, you know, touring and whatnot, slight differences in the frame over the long term can add up and make a big difference. So that's why, you know, they actually are, have these bikes targeted for two different things, uh, even though, like I said, they do share uh, the ability to do both, you know, many of the same things. So. Uh, we'll kind of go over that right now and we'll start showing you more details on the frame. So right now we're looking at the pugs. I just wanted to try to give you a shot of the, the bike from the side so you can kind of get a sense of this, uh, the angles. Um, but one of the big differences you see right off the bat is all of the tubes are round, especially the main triangle frame tubes. Uh, they're round and they're all smaller than the ice cream truck. 
Um, this was the thing I mentioned earlier, this jump bar. That's kind of the big uh, giveaway if you're looking at an older era bike, is that, uh, seeing that jump bar. Uh, on the Pugsley, the ice cream truck, uh, the Moonlander, which uh, they don't make anymore, um, also had that as well. Um, but the tube sizes are much smaller and then they're completely round. Whereas if you can contrast that with uh, the ice cream truck, and again, just trying to give you a decent shot, uh, the tubes actually have a little more uh, variability to them. They are round, but they also, you know, they, they have more difference. Uh, you know, they, it's wider here than it is here. And they have just a little more uh, girth to them all, all around, like the seat tube angle. Uh, the seat tube's uh, diameter and the down tube diameter are a little bit bigger. And again, you do not have the jump bar on the newer bikes, uh, whether it's the ice cream truck or the Pugsley. Covering another similarity is, uh, I mentioned earlier that the, the eyelets and the brazons for uh, bike packing, for carrying various racks and bags and all those things, they're very similar. I think they basically have all the same options. Uh, you know, you can see here, um, you have mounts back here. Uh, you have two water bottle mounts. And on the fork, you have a number of mounts for various things. Uh, you can mount a rack off the front, water bottles off the fork, uh, things like that. Uh, the ice cream truck's very similar. Uh, so you can see you can have very much the sim similar style, um, you know, mounts for all those same options. One big difference is, you only have one water bottle holder inside the triangle on the ice cream truck. I think that's probably because of the bend in the seat tube. And what they did do is uh, they added a water bottle mount or whatever type of mount you'd like to use down here, which the Pugs does not have. And the back is very similar. You have the mounts here and here. So again, they can pretty much do all the same things as far as mounting goes, very similar in all those things. A major difference in these two bikes, and this I attribute more towards the era of the bikes, not necessarily the bikes themselves, is the drivetrain. So this ice cream truck has uh, the Shimano 1x12, uh, which is great. So you don't have you know, any front shifter, front derailleur, any of that, taking up space and adding weight there. Uh, so that's a big difference. The, the current generation Pugs also has uh, a 1x uh, drivetrain. I think it's a 1x11 on, on the current bikes. Uh, but this older Pugs has a 2x10, uh, which is again, good solid drivetrain, but you do have the older school style, you know, two by front with the front shifter. Um, you know, it, it works well. I, I'm a fan of 2x10 uh, drivetrains. I have one on one of my other bikes and I do feel like you get more overall range and top speed out of it. Uh, but the 1x12 on the fat bike has been awesome. One more thing I just wanna kinda go over is talk about tire size. So the ice cream truck, uh, comes with 4.8 inch tires, 26 inch wheels, 80 millimeter wide rims. Uh, if you look at the back, you can see the uh, spoke lacing design. It uh, you know has the very traditional, you know, you have two rows of spokes, uh, one on each side, very similar to what you'd see on uh, a lot of bikes. Uh, same thing in the front. Contrast that with the Pugsley, in the back, because it has 135 millimeter spacing, which is unique, especially for a fat bike, uh, they have to do an offset on, the, on the, uh, the hub and the spoke lacing. So if you look at the spoke lacing, uh, even though there's two sets here at the hub, obviously, they all end up in the same, in a singular line on the rim, which is very unique. So it's something you just need to be aware of. One of the benefits of it is versatility. Uh, is you have that 135 millimeter spacing in the back, which is much wider on the ice cream truck. Um, but uh, you just have that kind of versatility riding anywhere in the world. You know, if you had a major issue, you could, um, you know, typically find a 135 millimeter hub uh, much easier pretty much anywhere. One of the benefits to the front, the front also has unique uh, offset spacing, is you have the ability uh, to put a, a, run a sprocket uh, on the front just as a spare. So if you had a major failure in your drivetrain, you could actually pull the sprocket, move it to the back, and set it up single speed uh, to keep going, which is uh, again, a pretty unique and pretty cool uh, feature. But again, it changes the offset on the front uh, 
hub set as well. So uh, just something uh, you need to be aware of uh, with these bikes, but it is one of the things that definitely makes it uh, reliable and versatile uh, when you're talking about a venture bike, a touring bike, a bike you could possibly be you know taking anywhere in the world. Okay guys, just a couple more things. Just wanna cover a little bit about the actual performance. Um, both bikes are super comfortable. Both bikes ride great. Um, this one does feel a little more trail oriented. Uh, it's got wider handlebars. It does feel a little slacker. Uh, does feels faster. This one is better for uh, more leisurely rides. It is a little more comfortable, a little more upright. Uh, so those differences in the frame do translate to how they feel when I'm riding the bike and uh, the type of riding I like to do. So that's why you know I can choose either one uh, based on the type of ride I want to do. I do have this bike set up tubeless which takes a ton of weight out of the tires and really makes the bike roll better and feel faster. Tubeless is in the plans for this bike as well. So in riding both bikes uh, in the snow they both do really well. This bike does do better. I think the tire size helps. I think the actual tire set helps as well. This bike has the four inch uh, wide tires. They're the Nates, uh, you know, they're much older design, uh, same tires front and back. This bike uh, has the 4.8s as I mentioned before, and it has uh, uh, the Bud tire up front and the Lou in the back. It's a front specific and a rear specific tire. Um, and then I think that the design is just better. Uh, the, the, the tread design on, on the, uh, uh, but up front uh, definitely helps with steering just the way uh, the tread pattern is and then in the back it gives you epic traction especially once you air down so um, this bike definitely performs better in the soft stuff than this bike uh, the Pugsley um, but but again this bike does do well so uh, they're both highly capable but you just get an extra an extra level of traction and I dare I say flotation in, in the soft stuff with this bike and it just seems to do a lot better I have done a lot of dirt road riding and gravel grinding with both both bikes as well. You know, sometimes you know I just want, you know, just more of a fun ride and um, have the comfort of of the, the fat tire bike uh, riding gravel. And you know, these things soak, soak up washboard like nothing. So uh, they really are great to ride for that type of riding. Even though they're not the most efficient, you know, you know, type of bike to ride uh, compared to a true gravel bike or even like a hardtail 29er, which I also typically we'll use for that type of riding for more speed um, but they are very comfortable and fun to ride uh, in, in that style of riding and they both do great tubeless again still being a huge benefit um, so once that bike this bike here uh, gets some of those upgrades it, it'll be uh, much more fun to ride that way as well speaking of upgrades do want to cover a couple things plans for both these bikes um, about the only plan I have for this bike, sooner than later, I will be adding a dropper seat post to it. And that's because I do want to actually test this bike on trails, on single track, on technical trail. Um, so to be able to do that, I really want to have a dropper to, to maximize uh, the benefit of it. Um, for this bike, I have a different plan. Uh, I think I'm going to do some upgrades, as I mentioned, going tubeless. i am probably put uh, a lighter a tire set on. At the very least, I will go tubeless. I will put a, a less aggressive uh, tire set on here. In addition, I have some other plans for this bike as far as more the touring adventure, probably change handlebars, um, and then start outfitting it with some uh, bags and things like that and get into some bike packing at some point. So that's what this uh, uh, bike is going to be geared towards. Okay guys, I think that's about uh, all I wanted to cover in this little bit of our comparison contrast to these two uh, bike platforms. Um, if somebody asked me if I could only pick one, which one would I pick? Uh, you know, right now I'd have to probably go with the ice cream truck. Um, you know, being a, a brand new current model bike and having all the upgrades it has, the modern amenities, um, it is hard to pass up. It is uh, a ton of fun to ride and it does perform great especially when you consider you know it is a, a heavy steel frame fat bike and it doesn't feel like it you know it, it's it's a great performer and a lot of fun to ride um, but I will say the fact that I do still ride this bike uh, am still excited about this bike still have plans for this bike um, is a testament to the platform uh, that you know it, it does have a lot to offer on its own 
um, and I'm going to you know, continue to ride it, enjoy it, and use it. And I think if you asked me if I was going to be doing a bikepacking tour you know, long term, any weeks or months or something like that, I would probably consider uh, seriously consider this bike as my first choice uh, just because of some of the things I mentioned earlier as far as you know, the flexibility uh, and, the, and things like that. So you know, it has its own merits uh, based on the, the, you know, the use. But both are great bikes. I uh, love them both, and they're both a ton of fun to ride. Okay guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, I have some other bike content coming real soon. Um, if you like what you're seeing, appreciate it if you drop a like down below. If you have any questions or comments, drop those down below. I will um, you know, respond to anything that, um, anything, any questions you may have. Please subscribe and uh, thanks and have a great day. Mm -hmm.